Yo, what's up guys? Alpha AF here, music producer, DJ, gym person. I work out sometimes. Yo, so I'm here. Uh, I did a poll on my Instagram and I asked you guys if you wanted to see an Alpha AF tier list where I just kind of rank all my songs based on like my personal preference and like how I feel about them. Yeah, we're gonna get to it here. The songs I included here are gonna be all songs that are pretty much on Spotify or that are like on my SoundCloud. I have some songs that are like on Apple Music that aren't on Spotify. I just kept those on there because like those were songs from like back whenever I started like producing under Alpha AF and I didn't really have like a distinct sound yet and these all these songs are gonna you know kind of closer to like my distinct sound right now yeah that's that's pretty much that uh, before I do start this I will say well two things one just because I put a song on like the F tier or D tier or whatever it doesn't mean that the song is bad it just means that like I feel like I could have did a lot more with the song or uh, I just don't like uh yeah I just don't like how I handled the song you know like maybe Maybe it was at a time where like I wasn't that great at producing it and it just didn't come out good in my opinion or uh, you know I just felt like I could have put more into the song than uh, I did or something I just just wasn't happy with it or like the, I wasn't happy with like the mix that I did with it or something you know something like that because some of the songs a lot of the songs are gonna go in like kind of the bottom three tiers right here pretty much almost every song that I made in 2018 is not gonna be on this list <laughs> the only songs that are on this list that are from 2018 are bitch lasagna alpha Christmas EP and uh, nar pump that's it because pretty much in 2018 is when I started alpha AF and like a lot of the songs from back then were like future based songs kind of like marshmallow like that kind of like happy trap stuff I, I don't like how they sounded like they just weren't produced well and I, I fucking sucked <laughs> I, was, I was terrible but uh, pretty much all the songs Songs aren't going to be on here. Just like I said, everything that's public right now is going to be on here. Okay, let's get started. All right, uh, first song here is uh, 38 to the Face remix. And fuck, I am going to put that. It's going to be A or B. Because with this song, like, it definitely holds a very special place in my heart. This is around the time I was able to produce songs fairly quickly, like within like four to five hours. That's quick for me. I made it like uh, when I wasn't really, uh, I was pretty upset at one of my friends. We aren't friends anymore, but like this song came out pretty cool. It's a remix of one of my favorite rappers songs uh, I am Jake Hill or just Jake Hill. This remix goes pretty hard uh, in my opinion production wise There's a lot of shit I could have did to like make it sound better I mean, it's more of a bootleg than a remix because I, I didn't use any stems. Fuck, I'm just gonna put a a tier because I do like playing the song live a lot and it's really fun and I need to move a little faster because I have 22 other songs to <laughs> talk about and this is gonna go really slow if I, you know, ramble on. All right, get your weight up, A tier. <laughs> I like this song a lot. Uh, this is one of my uh, like cleanest mixes ever that I've, I've done so far at least. But with that said, there's still some stuff that I don't like about this song. So one of the things I don't like is uh, like the intro part, like where it's like, get your weight up, weight up. I feel like that gets a little repetitive. And then um, for the break, I kind of wish I had put like a little more sub bass in the pad that I use, or at least like a sub layer under the pad, uh, just to give it more like oomph, you know, some more body. Other than that, uh, I like the song a lot. I like the drops. It was the first time I used like an LFO on the level of, uh, if you if you make screeches in Serum or whatever, like I use an LFO on the level to like kind of make like a, uh, what do you call it, like a trans gate kind of on the screech and it was like da -da 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 like on like on the third section of the drop, like if, the, if, you, if you separate the drop in like fourth section, it was like on the third section. Like, get your way up. Yeah. It was, it was fucking cool. And, I, and that's like my, my first time doing that. I remember like when I made this song, I was trying to figure out how to do it. I just figured it out on my own and I fucking did that. All right. Uh, Alpha Christmas. I had a put on F tier. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't like it that much, but what I will say about this that's good is, um, so this is made in 2018. I remember I made this back when I was, that's like my first year on uh, Team NBL. I remember like back then we would do like just feedback streams. We wouldn't do like demo drops. It would just be feedback like sessions every Sunday. And I remember, like, like I said before, I was making like uh, future based kind of stuff. And like, I would always get really, I wouldn't say bad feedback. Like it will be good feedback, but it'll be like hyper criticized. Cause like, I just wasn't good at the time. I really wasn't good. <laughs> and then um, when I made this, like this is like the first time I like kind of made, tried to make 
make like a hard trap kind of like EP or whatever. And I wanted to make it with Christmas because I thought it would be funny to make like a hard trap Christmas EP. I remember uh, when I posted, the first song I put on the feedback session for uh, feedback was these nutcrackers <laughs> and uh it's like the it's my version of like the nutcracker but like i, I sampled the sign that happiness video where uh the dude's like in the club and like they hurt his dick and he's like oh somebody hurt my dick and the drop hits and shit and then like i sampled uh these nuts these nuts and then uh i sampled the movie sausage party Sa sausage party i can't talk and uh when when mr grizz is talking about the crackers <laughs> he's like you talking about the crackers mm, fuck the crackers and like i i just chopped it up to make it sound like like these nutcrackers and like that was the name of the song and uh that was the first time i got like pretty positive feedback from the feedback sessions because <laughs> like it was funny like it wasn't like a like a well-produced project at all but it was funny and that's the whole reason i, I wanted to make it was just to be have like a, like a fun project christmas trap music is like really fun anyway so i made that but at the same time it's, it's not well produced at all in my opinion i just wasn't good at the time and yeah f tier bitch lasagna D tier, D tier for Bitch Lasagna. So with Bitch Lasagna, again, I wasn't all that great at the time, but the mix itself is pretty clean. But at the same time, I just, I, again, I wasn't a good producer really at the time. But with Bitch Lasagna, it is my most streamed song ever, like right now. I think it's got like over 300,000 like combined streams, like over all the platforms, like Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, all that stuff, and YouTube, like combined plays and all that. But with this song, so if you don't know the story behind Bitch Lasagna and PewDiePie, so PewDiePie made a diss track against T-Series, this uh, Indian YouTube channel, and uh, the guy who produced it was Party in Backyard. The song was uploaded to like Spotify and all that stuff over uh, through Party in Backyard's like account, and Party in Backyard had pretty much all his music taken down at the time. You know, when I found out about like this song, I went in his comments and people were saying like, you know, oh, like bring back Bitch Lasagna. Like, we're gonna get your music back, bro. Like, where's the music at? And I was like, huh, I'm a producer. I can give them my own version of the song. I can like make my own version of it, kind of like a cover. That way it won't get taken down, you know, because of copyright infringement or whatever. I use my own voice for the whole song. I use my own, like, I played the notes and shit like that. I recorded like the verse and all that and use all my own vocal samples. Yeah, it was a cool fucking song. And what happened was at the time, like, like I said, this 2018, I fucking suck. I think I only had like two monthly listeners and I think both of them were me, like on Spotify, like both of them were me because like I'll listen to my music at home and then I'll go like downtown in DC and listen to my music and it would count as two listeners to listeners the only person listening to my music was me and then i released i put this song out and then the next day i woke up to 1700 streams and i was like well i thought like i thought my 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 spotify for artists account was broken or like hacked or something i was like what the fuck this is this is not real the next day i uh woke up and it was like 3000 streams that day or something and like my listeners just fucking skyrocketed now and, and i made like a video like thanking everyone for listening to it and stuff and it was cool the money that i made from bitch lasagna alpha style i used to buy this laptop because my laptop at the time was really shitty uh it had like four gigs of ram <laughs> and I, tr I, was, I was trying to produce music on it and it was just terrible and this laptop has 30 32 gigs of ram um and it's very fast and powerful it doesn't have like a cool processor it has like an i3 processor but still like the 32 gigs of ram makes it like really power powerful i can use like eight or nine things of serum without it like crashing or slowing down at all it's fucking cool but yeah so bitch lasagna like if i didn't make this song i wouldn't have this laptop and i wouldn't be able to make any other song that i made after this song because of, of the laptop so this song kind of set the foundation of everything else all right that was kind of a long rant but that song is pretty important for me but uh, again i don't like the production behind it i, I was really bad at the time i, I didn't like it anyway this a tier. Free this motherfucker down. <laughs> this is like, I think my best uh, intro song, like for when I'm like DJing, freaking like, I love playing this song like first or like at the very beginning of my sets. Or I like this song being the first Alpha AF track in my sets. Cause like, uh, just the way the vocal kind of is placed in the track is like, you know, it starts like with the war horn, like boo, I'ma bring this motherfucker boo. It's like, oh shit, who's this guy? I'm gonna bring this motherfucker down, yeah. Like, and then like the verse is like, just started now. And if I come to your town, I'm gonna, Bring this motherfucker down. It's cool. Production wise, it's a very clean mix. Uh, that's kind of why, again, I like playing it live because, like, when you play it, when I play it in clubs and stuff, it fucking hits. Like, the sub bass and, like, the kick and shit just. And with this track, uh, at the time I used uh, this method that the Lit Lords uses for their hi hats, where they make like a hi hat roll, but then like they adjust it off beat a little bit, so that way it has like more swing to it. I watch a lot of Lit Lords tutorial videos and stuff. I was I'm part of the well, I was part of the Patreon. I'm about to go. I'm about to be deployed, so I had to like cancel all my subscriptions, and that was one of them, unfortunately. Yeah, I watched like almost all their uh, freaking 
Patreon videos and stuff. And that was one of their tips that they gave in their video. And I used it for this song. And uh, yeah, the song is fucking awesome. Uh, it doesn't have that many streams compared to my other tracks. But um, yeah, it's one, it's one of my favorites. Like, I, I'll, I, it's hard for me to like DJ without playing this song. All right, Chief, A tier. <laughs> all right, so I mean, all these songs are on A tier right now. But like, trust me, all almost all these are going to go like below that. Uh, I would put it on S tier, but uh, it's, it's just not that great. Uh, production wise you know for it to be s tier like i feel like i'd have to just really believe in the production but it's, it's just not there in my opinion a tier because yeah it's clean mix and stuff it was my second track with going hard but a tier for sure because lit lords oh isaiah from lit lords he gave this song props and he played it on his instagram and he shared it on his spotify play playlist at the time and uh he thought it was cool and um that made me happy and very proud of myself <laughs> and again like it's not like my best song is not the best I can do, especially right now. But um, at the time, that really made me happy. And this song has a good amount of streams, and it's one of my most pop popular songs right now. And um, yeah, it's a very special song. I like it a lot. And again, thank you to Isaiah for listening to it and supporting it. And you're awesome, and you're a great soul. <laughs> okay, uh, don't be a bitch. Uh, D tier. So this was made like early 2019. This is my first signed track. Well, this. Fake Friends was my first signed track, but this is the first one that got released. This is second sign. This is the second track I got signed ever. First time I tried to like mess with like you know rock, like metal and trap and stuff. This started as a project that I made while I was on duty. Actually, I, I brought my laptop to duty. I was just like standing at the at the uh, department with my laptop. I was making like this bullshit track. I went on Instagram. And I was like, hey, should I finish this song? And then everyone said, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. So I finished it and. Uh, I couldn't get it signed by uh, anyone like you know huge. Uh, Gone Postal signed it. But they're still they're still a good label for for beginners. Like I, I would recommend them for beginners. But um yeah the song itself yeah production wise not all that great. Uh, the screech I used I think I made from scratch I think. But uh yeah it's just not that great of a song. And when I say that this screech I made from scratch the other ones were presets that I adjusted. I, I think I made this one from scratch actually for pretty small figure. All right fake friends. Uh, yeah, F tier. <laughs> the original Fake Friends, I do not like. I don't like that song. At all. Like production, production wise, I, I don't like it. It's it's shitty. The arrangement is bad. Yeah, it's just it's just not a good song. But uh, backstory on this song, uh, I made it. I made it in December of 2018, but it didn't get signed until uh, like March of 2019. It released in June of 2019 with Beast Trap. It was my first Beast Trap song. Backstory, yeah. So I made it when I was like upset with uh, some of the friends I had. Uh, this is back before I had a car, and uh, I didn't really, and also I didn't really go out, you know, I didn't go out to like EDM clubs and stuff and meet other people that were into the same music I was into. At the military base I was at, no one else was, I, I, I didn't meet anyone else that was into EDM, and like I felt really alone, and like I felt like the friends I had, like, I just, I was just questioning like why I had them as friends at the time, and and well, the, the night I was questioning all this, I was I was very drunk, <laughs> and I was just depressed too. The the next day, uh, I was hanging out with some of them, and then you know I asked them to bring me to the commissary or the next to get a six pack of beer because they had a car and I didn't. And I came back to my room, I drank like three of them like within like ten minutes, and then I sat down and made fake friends within like I think like two hours. And then um, over the course of like the next few months, I like kind of tweaked it because um, I wasn't happy with it at, at first, and I just tweaked it and then. I eventually got it signed by Beast Trap. Yeah, as far as the backstory goes, like, I, I didn't have good reason to be, be mad at them. I, I'm, I'm still friends with them now. And they're, they are, they're not fake friends. They are real friends. <laughs> I was just, feel, like I said, feeling alone because I didn't have any friends that, like, were really into EDM like I was. And I, I felt like I couldn't relate to people. And, you know, they're still my friends till today, till today. And I love them very much. And if the people who are watching, or who, people who I'm talking about are watching, you know who you are. And uh, just know that I still care about you all and uh you are a real friend yes and i will never think you're a fake friend because you're real as fuck fake friends vip eh, tier. it's not as good as these in in my opinion as far as production but it is a lot better than this one and the reason i made this was because again it was because of a friend but actually before i say that when i made fake friends I always wanted to make a VIP, but I didn't have the motivation to do it because I made this because I was mad at 
at Mad at Friends. And um, I never had the motivation to like make a fake Friends VIP because I, and I tried before, like back in like March 2019. I just didn't have like any reason to make a VIP until uh, I had a falling out with a friend and they were fake <laughs> and I don't talk to them. Yeah, that made me want to make this song right here. Production wise, uh, I feel like I could have added more to it, uh, especially to the hard style drop, like just some like stuff in the uh, stereo realm, like because I have like the screech and the hard style kick and that, that's pretty much it. I should have added like some brass shots on the, on the sides or something to make it sound a little more full. It sounds a little flat, but this song is fun as fuck to play live because people like it and people can relate to it. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who have experiences with fake friends and who have fake friends now and they can relate to it and it's a cool song. So yeah, fire. Let's see. <laughs> uh, so again, like I said, just because a song is placed low doesn't mean it's a bad song. It just means that like, I feel like I could have did more with it. Fire is definitely one of them. I made this while I was at work. Like it'll be like, I'll be sitting down and work, like, on the, working on the song and then I have to get up to go do stuff. I was working at the post office at my last command. And uh, yeah, I'll just sit down and work on it, get up and have to do stuff, work, sit down and have to work on it, and get up and have to do stuff. So I feel like it was kind of rushed a little bit, but the drops do go hard, you know, they are, they are nice. It's a cool song to like work out to and play live sometimes. Yeah, production wise, not, not really all that great. Uh, Nar Pumped, C, or I'm sorry, D. This song, again, this is, actually this was the first track that I tried to do like the hard sauce screech on, and then it was out for Christmas. I made a remix like a, of, um, of Bro Science, if you don't like, if you don't watch Bro Science Life, he's like a YouTuber. His character's name is Don Mazzetti, and Don Mazzetti's channel, Bro Science Life, is about like funny workout shit and like uh, just topics about like the gym. And he explains it in like a funny douchebag kind of way. I've been a huge fan of him. Uh, I've been watching at the time. I've been watching him like for like five years because <laughs> he's awesome. I still watch every like all of his new videos and stuff. New videos every week. <laughs> and uh, so this, I made the, I made the song. I made the video. I uploaded it to YouTube, and I sent him a link to it. On on Instagram and uh, I didn't think he was gonna read it because he's really popular but um I typed I was like hey yo man like my name's Ryan or Alpha AF and I'm a producer and stuff and I've been like a huge fan of you for like years I watched you all throughout college and I still watch you now I'm in the military and like you've been a huge part of my life and a huge part of like my uh fitness journey and I thought it'd be cool if I made this remix for you because you know your videos are really awesome I asked him like uh you know if you like it uh it'd be cool if I could have your permission to like upload it to like Spotify and stuff and uh he replied and he was like bro this is fucking awesome yeah sure upload it <laughs> it was like a really short message i had this like long ass legend message he's like yeah sure it's dope <laughs> and then he shared it on his story too it was really cool like a bunch of his followers came to me and they're like bro you're awesome man how do you how do you know dom like blah 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 but yeah man mike is really cool he's a really awesome dude really super genuine guy and i like it whenever like popular people like talk to their fans it's, it's really cool and it made me feel really special and i felt awesome uh, all right cool uh next song hardwired beats here so hardwired uh it was my first dubstep song where i made like all the drop sounds from scratch uh i think there's like six drop sounds i think yeah two of them i didn't make from scratch but they were like presets that i had, like tweaked one was like the stereo bass like if you listen to the song like there's one bass that's like mono it's like wah 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 and like that stereo one the spread one is the one is the preset but like i adjusted it and stuff to fit the song and then during like the first half of the drop like when the voice goes like hardwired <laughs> hard and like there's that laser sound like doo -doo 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 -doo. that sound i didn't make from scratch i tried to in serum and I, I just couldn't get it to sound the way i wanted to so i used a hard style screech preset from transverse and uh i tweaked it to make it sound like a laser because at first it was like a wah and then i tweaked it to me like Pew! <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i did that yeah my first song with going hard first signed dubstep track ever people like it the only reason i have on b is because my only uh critique about it is the sub bass does not hit hard at all like in the drop like compared to other songs that like i'll play live like i'll play like ray volpe or like some other like dubstep track and i'll play this in between it and it has like barely any sub bass compared to like the other tracks it has sub bass but like it doesn't hit as hard and that's my only thing if it had sub bass then this would easily be like like a tier but b homicide remix that i made or homicide bootleg d yeah, D's here. This is a remix I made of uh, Homicide by um, Eminem and Logic. I made it before this one, I'm Jake Hill remix. You know, I love Logic and Eminem. They're two of my favorite rappers. Eminem's my favorite. Yeah, production wise, just not really there. I can't really bring myself to play it live, but it does have energy, you know, but production wise, I don't, I don't like it that much. I can't breathe. C tier. So I Can't Breathe is a song I made after my last breakup before my fiance. 
I made it two or three months afterwards. Yeah, like two months after, because um, I was just feeling like pretty down about it. And I was just making music, and this is one. This is one of the songs I made after the breakup, like about the breakup. And uh, I made two songs. One was called uh, "Dead Love," but I didn't release it because uh, like the vocal was E minor, E major, and the song was in E minor. And I tried to make it fit, and it didn't work. <laughs> but this song came out from that. Uh, I self-released this song because uh, I didn't think any label would take it. They didn't. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, this song is uh, it's kind of cool to me. I guess even though it's, it, it came from a sad moment in my life, it's it's kind of a cool song. Like I listen to it, and I'll, I'll feel happy because like the way I, I produced it was I was thinking like the first drop would be like kind of sad, and then like the second drop it would be like uplifting because I was thinking like you know start off sad, but I wanted to make it thinking like and I made it for myself mostly. I, I want to make myself think like you know you're sad now, but later you want to be happier, and I am happier. <laughs> That's how, and on the on the YouTube video I made for it, it does that too. Like I have like stock images and stock clips of like the sad people, and then like later on it transitions into like happy couples and stuff. Yeah, happy, but my baby. <laughs> All right, uh, my face. A B. I gotta put B. Yeah, because, all right, so again, a lot of these rankings are based off of, like, how I view the production, like, how I produce the track, and my face is fucking dope, like, as far as, like, the sounds I use and stuff like that, it would easily be A, it would be honestly one of my, one of my best tracks, but the mix itself is what brings it to B, and I don't like the way I mix the song down, and it's just, like, with this one, like, I tried, like, I tried to, I tried to, like, the mix as good as I could, but what came out was a song, and, you know, I was just happy with it, and I can still play it live, uh, people, Still like it and stuff with this i tried i made it with the intention of getting it signed by harsh records and uh they gave me a chance well they gave me three chances actually to fix the mix and i just couldn't get it to like where i wanted it to so i just you know pass on you know trying to send it to them anymore because i don't want to like bug them or whatever yeah i couldn't get it signed by uh I sent it to three other people. I, I sent it to Hybrid Trap, and I didn't get a response. I didn't get a response from them. I think their email's dead. I didn't get a response from Hybrid Trap. I sent it to this other label called like MMXVAC. They have like some really dope shit. They said no, pretty much. And I sent it to Thrive, and I didn't get a response from them. And uh, I was just thinking like, yeah, I gotta get better at mixing if I'm trying to like get something like this signed. So that's why it's B tier. Uh, in the pit, C tier. This was the first song where I found my sound. Like I found the Alpha AF energy, like what I wanted to produce. Yeah, this was the first song I ever had that. Cause I made this song, all right, this song got released after Fake Friends. Like this is my second signed track after Fake Friends and third signed track, yeah, signed track ever. Beast Trap picked it up. I love Beast Trap, they're awesome. This track is dope. Production wise is not there in my opinion. Cause like the master, like if my mix was better, the master would be better. And uh, the master, it sandwiches the drop because I didn't really mix the drop that well in my opinion but at the same time the song is dope and it was like the first alpha AF track in my opinion like the first like hard trap alpha AF track and that shit is dope uh Molly A tier uh yeah okay I'm a little biased on this <laughs> Because this is the song I made named after my fiance. I love her so much and she is hot and sexy and she's my baby. I love her forever. But there are some things in the song production wise that I wish I had done better. In the intro, like after that sub drop, like good golly miss Molly boo and like I wish I had had something else going in the low, the lows, you know, um, to give it more body. But everything after, after that is dope in the song, in my opinion. Uh, I got put B. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, yeah, I got to there. I, I know I can move it, but like, you know, I have to be. Just, just because of production. Just because of production, that's it. As far as the song goes, one of my favorite songs to play live, and just one of one of my favorite songs in general that I made. But yeah, like if it was, if it wasn't for that, then uh, it'd be a lot better. Cause like, what these songs have are body. Like they do have nice like body and fullness. They sound full, you know. And that one, like it's just the intro, you know. And even though it's just the intro, like the intro is very important, you know what I mean. Within the first like 30 seconds of listen listening to a song, like you already decide if you like it or not. And uh, I feel like it has turned off a lot of people because I, I sent it to other labels to get released and like you know they said no. Yeah. Besides that, you know, it's an awesome song. And backstory with this song, I made it for Molly after like two or three months of us dating and um i found like the vocal sample on splice that i said molly in it and i was like oh it'd be cool if i made a song like you know for her and uh i made it and i sat down and made it in like four four hours and then uh i went to her room and i was like yo molly I made this song for you check it out check it out and then i played it for her and she was like shocked that like i had already made a song for her like after only dating it for three months but like i made it because i felt like it was right you know i felt like i mean she wasn't going anywhere i mean like not <laughs> but no like I, I i love the song and i love you molly 
All right, next song, Move My Body, C tier. Don't like this song that much. <laughs> it has energy, uh, I guess, but I don't like it that much. Production-wise, I feel like it's lacking. I think I made this song at work, too. Uh, I, I, yeah, I started it at work, then I brought it back to my room and, like, tweaked it. Um, I don't like the song that much. Yeah, just pro production-wise, it's not that great in my opinion. Uh, like the vocal, like in the first and second section in the intro, like where it's like, oh, what you waiting for? I feel like I could have like mix it better, you know? And then especially the part where it's like, make way gonna, make way gonna, make way gonna move my body. Like that part is like really harsh. Like it has like really harsh high frequencies and I, I should have took it out. But, um, and I thought I did at the time, but like when I got mastered, it just brought all of it out and made it like super harsh on your ears and stuff. And I, I just didn't like it. Uh, and again, I know that's gonna turn people off from the song if they listen to it for the first time. I wasn't really happy with the transition to the first drop, where it just kind of goes straight into hard trap, bitch, man, you know? But um, again, the energy is there. It's, you know, it's, it's not a bad song, but, you know, it's not all that great in my opinion. Push it. C tier. Same thing. Production-wise, I feel like I could have done a lot better. And same thing with... Uh, in the pit. The drop is kind of sandwiched a little bit in my opinion in the, in the master but that's my fault for not mixing it well enough but still a really awesome song and I like playing this live too because it's a very fun live song. Again production could have been a little better. Funny thing about this song is I made this song while I was laying down on Molly's bed. <laughs> I made it on my laptop and on my headphones and I made it while I was laying down on her bed and then uh, I finished the mix down while I was like sitting at my desk but I made it the whole song on her bed and yeah right now uh, B. I have a B tier. This is my first collab with another hard trap artist, Jungler. What's up, bro? Very fun track. Vocals really cool. Production wise, I feel like I could have done a lot more with uh with like the layers and stuff, especially in the intro. I feel like I could put more stuff in it to make it sound more full. Cause it's just like the melody and the brass shots, and then just like the drum beat. Yeah, I feel like I could have did like a lot more, and uh, I'm just not that happy with what I did with it. The drops are cool. Yeah, with this track, uh, Jungler pretty much set up the foundation for it, and like I kind of added, like you know, stuff to the drop that he already had. Yeah, without him, this song wouldn't happen. And uh, yeah, really awesome, awesome track. Uh, Sanction of Hatred. This song would be a if I, at the time, I had found a way to incorporate uh, some kind of bass in the sections where like the the drums are, not the drop, but like the intro and the break and stuff. If I had found a way to incorporate bass in this at the time and mix it well to where it could fit, that would be A tier, but B. Uh, this song, so like, uh, just like uh, I Can't Breathe, I made this song the day of the breakup of the relationship before Molly. The day we broke up, I made this song because I was very angry. Uh, I was mostly angry at myself. So with, with me in general, like uh, when it comes to like stuff that happens to me, uh, I like to blame myself and like take responsibility because like I don't like to blame other people for stuff. So like in the instance of the breakup, I felt like I wasn't enough, you know, I felt like, you know, and then, yeah, she broke up with me. I felt like I wasn't enough. I felt like for some reason, like I didn't convince her to stay because I wasn't good enough. That made me angry at myself. And I was just like wallowing in a bunch of hatred. And then I found the sample of Sullivan King uh, saying sanction of hatred and sanction means punishment. So it's a punishment of hatred. And I thought that fit how I was feeling because it's like, you know, because you weren't enough, here is your punishment, hatred, because you know, you didn't offer enough in the relationship. So, you know, have a healthy dose of hate for yourself. And it wasn't healthy uh, at the time, you know, it was a very bad way for me to handle the situation. But again, I blame myself and I made this song the day it happened. Like I was in a room, we had this, we had to talk, went back to my room and I made, I sat down and made this song. <laughs> like that's exactly how it happened. Uh, I made it in like two hours. One of my favorite songs in, gen in general, but again, like if I had found a way to incorporate bass in the song besides the drop, then it would be cool. Uh, and fun fact, at the end of the song where uh, the guitar solo comes in, it's like, -na 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 -na. I played that. Uh, I didn't play it on guitar, but I played it like on piano, like with the guitar thing. Yeah, I just kind of like fucked around and like played it in and I made it sound like a real guitar kind of. Production wise uh, and mix wise, it's kind of harsh and it's hard to listen to at a high volume, especially with the headphones on. So yeah, again, that's kind of why it's on beats here too. Uh, temptation. Mm -hmm. I feel bad because, oh, okay. Anyway, I'll put eight here. Just because like production wise, it it's there. You know what I mean? Like uh, with this track, so in a lot of my hard trap songs, my formula is like pluck melody with a pad and brass for the intro. And then the build up and the drop with the screech. And then the break is the pluck melody again with the pad from the intro and the bass. 
or in the brass, and then some kind of drum beat, then it goes into the build up again, then drop, then outro, which is the intro from the drop. This song, I didn't do that. Uh, I incorporated like strings and violins and stuff, and uh, orchestral drums and stuff, because I kind of want like a royalty kind of feel, because I know that like, uh, I knew at the time that Vivid Vision's audience, you know, they, they, they really like her. Uh, and you know, I kind of see them as like putting her like kind of on a pedestal. So I thought it'd be cool if like, you know, we had a song that had like, kind of that like royal royalty feel to it. Like, uh, like with the strings going, like kind of feels like a queen's walking down the fucking like, I don't know, aisle or whatever the fuck. And, um, you know, I thought it would just be cool. And, uh, she delivered, like, and she did, like, the cool opera vocals for it and stuff. And obviously, like, you know, for her cosplay, she does, like, you know, like, the, you know, kind of revealing, like, outfits and stuff. And, you know, her, her audience likes that a lot. So I thought it would be cool to have, like, a temptation thing. And, uh, it worked. It was a really cool, uh, really cool concept. And then we made the music video for it, which was, came out freaking awesome. Like, uh, her friend Vivi, like, edited it to the T. It was so fucking cool. And this is a self-release and uh it got a good amount of streams and stuff and the youtube video got a lot of plays for a self-release and um yeah i hadn't had a self-release do this well since uh bitch was on it yeah and you know just shout out to her for helping out with the song and stuff as far as production i, I always got to pick on the production at the time i wasn't all that great at mixing and i could have mixed her vocals where where she does like the, the ha, 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 ha. like uh there's like a harsh frequency in there in the mids that kind of like cuts above all of the other songs and, or all the other sounds in the mix and it kind of hurts your ears if you listen to it on a high volume and i wish i had found a way to like kind of like compress that uh frequency like if i had used like a a, a dynamic eq or something and like automated the like uh the frequency or whatever and i've done it before i just didn't i didn't really think about doing that at the time uh but if i did that the song would have been a little bit better in my opinion and it was like the snare yeah the snare and the drop i think could have came out a little more yeah just like minor stuff you know uh but besides all that you know i think a tier and the night very last song um b tier this was my first dubstep song ever and i tried to go for like a whole like a rhythm feel and the way i wrote the drop i made the drop first the notes i made or the, the notes i picked for the bass and stuff it sounded like kind of spooky so i thought it would be cool to have like kind of a spooky feel for the whole song i recorded my own vocal sample for it where it's like they all come out at night like that's my voice i just pitch it down there's only two drops tro dro uh, main drop basses just like the first section and then like the second section is like wah, 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 wah. <laughs> those are both presets but i just tweaked them i tried to make the first one from scratch but i just watched a tutorial on youtube about it yeah it's, it's a dope track mix wise it's good i can play it uh with like other dubstep songs and like a full set because like the sub bass is there like it's a really powerful song but the second drop bass like the wah, 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 wah. i feel like that could have came out a little better or i could have just picked a different sound but it kind of does fit the style of the song but at the same time like i feel like people can be turned off by it so yeah that's the that's the tier list yeah that's uh pretty much it no song no songs in s tier because like I don't feel like I've made anything that's like, holy shit, it's the best song ever. Like, I just don't see myself as that producer right now. Maybe after deployment. But until then, uh, thank y'all for watching. If you want me to do something else like this in the future, let me know. Yeah, subscribe, like, and all that other YouTube stuff. Yeah, that's it. I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't have like an outro. So, peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs>